Good day. I was surprised by the positive response to my I'm not an economist but video, so this is a follow-up. Thanks to everyone who commented. I'm going to mention some of the points and ideas from the comments, plus some more of my own thoughts. I still can't watch or edit videos, so the video links which some of you have sent me are now on my watch later playlist. Um, I've also written something down to uh, put into this video, so hopefully it should be slightly more coherent and less rambly than some of my unscripted videos. So, to follow on from my last video where I mentioned the UK's one trillion pound debt, or deficit, I didn't mention the fact that governments have bailed out the banks when some of the bankers gambled and lost out. Which basically means that we have bailed the banks out. So does this not mean that the governments are further in debt in an effort to stop the banks from imploding? The Royal Bank of Scotland is 87% publicly owned now, yet we still allow the CEO a salary of over a million pounds per year. Anyway, that's another story. But the thing is that to a non-expert like me, it seems that vast sums of money are going round in circles. The banks are propping up the governments, and the governments are propping up the banks. It's like a huge game of smoke and mirrors, or a house of cards. The system is incredibly complicated. I don't see why it needs to be so complicated. Other than to keep economists and accountants in work. The same applies to the tax system. Here in the UK, it could be simplified so much. It would be great if governments made it easier for us to find out and see the movements of all this money, whether taxes or debts. A simple spreadsheet including such information as how much is owed to whom, and what the terms of the loan are. It's also been suggested that we have a faith in money, which makes the whole thing seem like a kind of Emperor's New Clothes type of situations, or even a religious one. I'm sure that everyone knows that money is simply a means to an end, and the pursuit of financial... I'm going back on that bit. And I can't edit it! Bloody hell! I'm sure that everyone knows that money is simply a means to an end, and the pursuit of financial wealth for its own sake is pointless. I'm not a fan of TV programmes like The Apprentice, but they are incredibly popular, and along with The X Factor and many other programmes and, sp and spectator sports, the message seems to be that winning is important. Competing and being better, stronger, faster and smarter than the next person is what it's all about. Success is measured in terms of power, influence and money. I'm not saying that competitiveness is an entirely bad thing, but I do think that it's pushed way too far on TV and in the mass media. The selfish end of the competitive spectrum is what I think of as the business mentality. Anyway, back to the economy and simplifying things. I don't see why it would be such a bad idea to think of countries and their economies as businesses, but not the type of business where bottom-line profit is the most important thing. Long-term sustainability, you know, thinking beyond the next four or five years and giving more consideration to people's health and happiness. I know I'm being idealistic, and I don't have some kind of coherent master plan to sort all of the world's problems out. All I can do is chuck in a few ideas for consideration. Perhaps if some of them are good, they'll spread and grow. I would have thought that borrowing beyond your means is a prime example of short-term thinking, yet this is precisely what has happened in the financial world. And most of the economists think that continued growth and more borrowing are the only solutions. There is talk about something called sustainable growth, but that seems like a contradiction to me. That's all for now, folks. Thanks for watching.